Welcome to Tony Hobbs's wild camping extravaganza. In this, in this video, what we're going to do, well, what Lassie and I are going to do, is we are going to show you three different pitches of the Trail Star. So, in effect, this is going to be a Trail Star series of videos. Now, have you heard, have you heard the one, <laughs> the chicken that crossed the, <laughs> that didn't cross the road? Well, you've probably heard the one that you can't squeeze the trail star in. Lassie, that you can't squeeze the trail star in or you need a very big, wide open pitch to get it on. Well, I will admit this is a reasonably big pitch, but it's not exactly flat. It's not exactly without stones and rocks. Have a look at what we've done here. Now, as you can see, we've had to pitch the trail star on the, almost on the side of a hill here. So you can see that side of the trail star is at least, <laughs> what, I don't know, what, what's that, what's that like? Uh, um, mm, probably not a meter, but 60, 70 centimeters. I mean, that is that, that corner there to that corner there, it's really difficult, you know, to, to illustrate it here, but it, you know, it must be at least 50 plus, maybe 60 centimeters, I don't know. But it's significantly higher on the left than it is on the right. You know, but maybe the extra long <laughs> edges <laughs> helps in this pitch. <laughs> and I've got oodles of space inside. Anyway. <laughs> You can see that I have pitched it quite high. I, I could pitch it a little bit lower. If I pitch the pole lower, then I do get, you know, a little bit of a curve on there, admittedly. But then, <laughs> you know, we are pitching a shelter literally on the side. Now try and do that with your Hillybergs or something else and you ain't gonna do it. So we've got the back and these sides quite low to the ground, not, not flush. I could probably get that one lower to the ground by moving it in a little bit, but we'll kind of hope that that's enough there. I did see another video um, on the trail star. <laughs> I don't know what it is with some people. Um, and they, they said that they don't use these mid-hem tie-outs. Now, <laughs> but I can't imagine not using them, uh, you know, to be honest. I think they're an integral part of pitching the trail star. I mean, you know, you might get away without using them. But as you can see, to get the pitch on the side of this hill here, I've used that one down there to get that lower to the ground. I've deliberately kept this one quite long to give height here. I, I like to use my guy lines, you know, some are like long because this is downwind here. We all like a bit of downwind. So there, you know, it's, it's fine, it, it doesn't matter, they're long and high off the ground, same here. The ones at the back, you know, I've tried to get, you know, closer to the ground because obviously the wind is coming from that direction. Now I've not got it, you know, absolutely drum tight, probably with a little bit of jiggery pokery, you know, here and there, you know, you probably could get it tight. But I've done, uh, you know, 
I've got it 95% tight on most of the edges and I think that's more than good enough for this very very wonky pitch so let's go and have a little look inside because we will have to sleep at the back again I did think I might and you know because it's so high <laughs> there's not there's not enough room in here <laughs> I haven't got enough room in here <laughs> my shelter's not big enough so I did have to put this onto its maximum height here so this so this so this pole here is probably at least 1.3 meters the reason why I had to go extra long was basically so that I could get the angle for that one over there if I'd have gone too low then I probably wouldn't have got that angle there so that's why you know I went very long here and I will almost certainly have to sleep at the back I, I won't be able to sleep you know there with those stones there so you know we've got we've got the Lake District joining us you know we're never greedy on this channel we never want to have just grass inside our shelters we're always more than happy to, you know to bring in to bring in some of the outside with us so i didn't bring the ground sheet i brought the bivy so we'll kind of see how that goes because i've had a few well i think one person asked if a bivy will go in here and and i and i saw actually someone posted ooh, I can actually get out of here without eudifying myself. And for the next night, we've got a completely different pitch. I just wanted to look around this area. It's quite windy um, on that side of the, of the ridge line because uh, the wind is coming in this direction. But just down here, it's quite sheltered. And I was just looking around as one does and I spotted this reasonably flat um, space here. Now, again, you know, it's not perfect. I'll take you around, but I have had to pitch over rocks here. So again, if people are concerned about pitching over rocks, well, there you see, you can pitch over rocks in there and this side here is obviously a little bit higher but that should be okay because the wind should be coming directly towards me so that should be okay this line here i've obviously pitched to the ground literally to the ground the one at the back is also at the ground and then that one over there is at the ground now, they're kind of at the ground because the the ground kind of comes up here, up here, and well, kind of there. So what I've done is I've pitched down, I've put that line there close-ish to the ground, as close as I can, just so it's not too far off the ground. The same there. Now what you could do if it got very very windy to save you lowering the pole anymore you could just pull that line in and just whack it into the ground right below now yes if you do that you will lose a little bit of internal space but not a huge amount because it's so massive in there anyway it doesn't actually matter and also just remember that we are on very uneven 
ground here. This is not, you know, this is not even ground at all. It's high there and high here. So, you know, you have to, you have to kind of pitch it how you can. This one here, as you can see, I have done that thing of pitching it quite close to the ground. But even there, it's not really losing much, if any, internal space. Now, because it's very rocky here, what I have done, and I don't normally do this, but because I couldn't get all of the pegs in 100%, I have put knots on the other line and then just put another peg in. So one there, just to tighten up. So there, because some of these pegs I couldn't sink right, you know, into the ground. So for the first time ever for kind of like added security, I have put extra pegs in. Now I don't normally do this when I can get the peg in firmly into the ground. This one is raised up a little again because, you know, the wind is coming this way, so it should be fine. And it's quite sheltered here. Now my line coming off the trail star here, as you will see, I've got one coming off just to the left because that was kind of just the most convenient place to put it. Uh, but again, that peg isn't in the ground, you know, 100%. It's about 90% in. So I've run another line down into there. So I've doubled that line up as well. And, you know, with a little bit of jiggery-pokery, lowering things, lengthening things, and... It's difficult to show it because you're just fiddle-assing around, you know, a bit here, a bit there, you know, until you get a pretty tight pitch. And as you can see, even on uneven ground here, it's quite tight. And, you know, there's... <laughs> I don't know why people say there's no room inside. All right, obviously, I've pitched it a little bit lower just in case the wind picks up in the night. So it is lower than yesterday. It is lower than last night, but there's still, you know, I can just about kneel up here. And then when you look at the edges there, obviously this one here, this line here does curve down you know, a little bit, but then I have pitched quite low. But that one there is straight. This one here curves in, you know, a little bit, is reasonably straight. But again, we're pitched on anything but even ground. The only thing I have to hope is that the wind doesn't come this way too much, but we are, we have got these rocks, you know, right in front. So those rocks also give some, <laughs> some protection there, but we're literally right on the, we're right on the edge here. <laughs> it's a little bit of a risky one, this, because we're, it's, it's exposed, but the wind is supposed to be westerly, which is from behind, so it should come that way. So we shouldn't, unless there's any just updrafts that come in, we shouldn't really have anything, you know, coming in. Obviously, we've got a rockery inside here, so we certainly won't be able to sleep anywhere over there. I'm kind of hoping that I can put the bivy through here so my head is facing that way. If not, then I might be able to sleep at the back again across there. So once again, I have, you know, two options 
as to how to set, you know, as to how to put the bivy in here and, you know, and how to sleep with it. So I'll have a look at that later on. So it's uh, coming up to six o'clock. So this is my like second pitch, as it were, and I can still, go back there, see, and I can still just about crawl out without having to be on hands and knees and bumps a daisy too. We should be okay there. I just wanted to show the, the trail star video section, you know, inside here. So, you know, you can see how much space there is. Now I'm, I'm Tom Cruise height, you know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> about Top Gun. Um, <laughs> anyway, you know, I'm about five foot eight. Probably a short five foot eight. So, you know, you have to sort of add a few, <laughs> you have to add a few inches here and here and here, you know, for your own measurements as it were. But I'm sitting <laughs> here as Terry Wogan used to say, sat sitting. It's not sat, it's sitting. I'm sitting here, this side of the pole, and obviously that's my little, <laughs> that's my little short, fat, hairy legs there. And, you know, they're nowhere near the inside there. Obviously, you couldn't really use that space because these rocks and what have you are here. But, and then when you look at the back, you can see that's the back of the mat. And then, you know, that's, that's the inside just about there. And obviously I can't even reach the back of the shelter there. You know, there's a, an absolute ton of room in here. Frankly, if anybody says there's limited internal usable space, I, I'm just discrediting that. I mean, you know, and then, you know, back here, there's a ton of space back there. So this is all space, you know, realistically, apart from maybe you had here, you know, there's a ton of space there where you could put stuff, you know. <laughs> I mean, at the moment, I just got it dumped here because I've not sorted myself out yet, but I will put some bits over there and some bits here, and I need to make some space over there for Lassie. And then when you come over this side, so I'm here next to the pole, so you've got that space <laughs> over there, and now, inside, this is the head of my bed here. The, the bivy thing comes up and hooks onto that. You then have one dog, and dog is virtually inside, you know, certainly she, there's stacks of room for her to come back and be, you know, inside. This thing is just jai effing enormous. And this is my headroom here. You know, I've got room here. I've got it pitched so parts of it are to the ground. Obviously, because of the ground kind of going, going up and down and up there and, and the same there, it's not very even ground. And obviously this side here, I've pitched quite, quite low. The door, you know, the door's not very low, but then because the wind is coming from behind and kind of that side, I tend to favour you know, pitching the back and the sides close to the ground 
and then I tend to let the door, you know, be, be higher, and then you've got more space, you know, to get out. Yes, you could lower the door down, but why lower it if it's not really necessary? You, you will easily get, okay, on this pitch here, you won't get two, you, you won't get two people in unless it's the child or something. You won't get two in here because the rocks, you know, are, are in the way. Um, so yeah, you yeah you know, on this pitch you you wouldn't realistically get two people in, but you know generally speaking, this new trail star it really is significantly bigger than the old one. It really does seem to have a lot more internal space for where you could could put a second person and have you know a lot more room for your kit. It's, it's extraordinary how much how much room there is. I mean, that's my pack. That's a, a full length pack there. You know, that's the MLD Exodus pack. And it's, it's in, well inside there. It's not e even touching the pole here. You know, I don't know how long that is, but you know, you can see you know, and, and Lassie is, is literally inside, inside the doorway, easily inside the doorway there. I've never, I don't think I've ever been inside a trail star. This, this is massive because normally when I put the, the ground sheet inside the Certainly inside the, the, the Cuban trail star is much smaller inside because when I put the, the ground sheet in the Cuban trail star, the ground sheet literally, you know, it doesn't go to the door, but it's not a million miles away from the door. I'll have to put, I'll have to put that ground sheet in here sometime. I didn't bring it with me, but this thing is just, it's huge. Anyway, you've probably all turned off and bored by now. End of trail star video for today. Okay, well, unfortunately, once again, my microphone failed. I don't know why. So we will ad lib. Uh, so we're basically gonna ad lib now. Do the best you can to follow. I'm here uh, demonstrating the wind direction is coming from this back side. I've pitched it very low. This is about one meter, one meter 10. And of course, as usual, it's not on the flattest of ground, but it's relatively flat. I've got the sides and the back very, very low. Of course, if you can lip read, you can tell me in the comments below what I am saying. So now we come back to the side here and again, as usual. And on this occasion, I've managed to pitch the front quite low, uh, that middle section because of the very rough ground. And because this is downwind there, I've pitched that side higher. The pegs here were very, very difficult to get into the ground, so I do uh, a bit later on put some rocks on top of the pegs. I had to hammer the pegs in and I've put again two lines on the front pole. Now the other thing that I am mentioning here is to get the back very very tight but not moving the back peg. I put the back peg in exactly where I wanted it to be to get the pitch how I wanted and then I pull the front guy line that one next to the pole tight I'm here showing you that these on all five edges can be used for additional uh, guy lines with bungee cord attached realistically you won't need to use these uh, you know very often if at all I mean maybe like if the if it's incredibly strong wind 
uh, you know, it might give some additional support, but it will be quite limited because you, you're having to use bungee cord on them so you don't put pressure on those side panels because, of course, it's the side panels bowing in and out which gives it its strength. So, you know, don't put, uh, you know, a solid guy line directly, you know, on those lines, on those uh, rings. Inside, even at this uh, low pitch, I still have quite a reasonable amount of space in here. Again, please leave in the comments below. If you're lip reading, tell me what I'm saying. Here we're demonstrating that all five ridge lines are straight and tight. There's little to no bowing in on any of them. I have headroom here, <laughs> a little wave of some description for some reason. The pole, of course, as you can see, is quite low here. I do find with this trail star that it's more than um, helpful to turn your pole upside down. Maybe that one's bowing in just a little bit. Uh, but again, it is a very, very low pitch. As you can quite clearly see, as you can quite clearly see, there is an absolute ton of room in here. Okay, so what I'm showing you here is that I have used here two clips, bungee cord, and then a solid line down to a peg. And I've not pulled it tight. It's not pulling the... Uh, the material out of shape at all it just supports it there and then you just go down to one peg down there and then on, on this line I've used one of those plastic grippy things which you can see here again like I said I think realistically you know these lines probably are not going to do a massive amount and you wouldn't need to put it I uh, know on on a down on an upwind as it were um, panel and I would only really consider it in very very strong wind we're just simply doing it here just to you know, illustrate its uh, possibilities to you this one I've just used one clip and then a funny knot thing there because I normally have this line on the inside. Again, it's not done tight. And then this one comes down to one of those slippy knotty things, which I've gone and forgotten the name of at the moment. But there, you know, these are some knots that you really should know. And you can save weight. You don't need one of those plastic clips. I will have a video on knots sometime in the future. Again, you can see here that I have pitched this point here and the one just around the corner there on the right, very, very close to the ground. So again, you lose, you know, maybe one millimeter, you know, of internal space, but it's, you know, it's such a small amount that you're losing that it simply doesn't matter. But it just shows that if you have, you know, reasonably flat ground, you know, you can get this very close to the ground. And if you do have air coming in or some wind coming in, and then we've usually got something with us that we can put down just to block that little extra wind that we don't want coming through. Just put your pack there. Over at the front, you notice that I have two guy lines. That is simply because the ground was so rocky, I just wanted extra support. Normally, one peg per line is enough. It does look an absolutely fabulous shelter. It always reminds me of like a stealth fighter or something like that. You can just ignore the tripod there. I think I was doing a a time lapse on pitching it which we will take a look at at the very end of this video 
Okay, I think what we're talking about here again is how much space, you know, there is. You could easily put a second bivy on the right hand side of the pole. And you can also quite clearly see that there is, you know, a lot of room to my left right here. You can see I've got headroom, not a massive amount, but there is headroom. This is a very, very low storm pitch. And then here, what I'm talking about is that these clips do work okay for your bivy bag if you want to use them. Or of course you could use the line over this side. Run, run a line from that one over to the one on your left shoulder, right shoulder here. So you like literally have a, a line running all the way across there, there to the other side. And then just raise your bivy bag clip up to that. Exactly like I'm demonstrating a bit like a, I think I'm saying a press there. Either that or I'm doing a, a demonstration for a, for, for a flight in this stealth fighter. God alone knows what. <laughs> I think I'm saying a bloody press. <laughs> in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Tony of Spirit. Here we're quite clearly showing that you could put another bivy bag down on the side you quite clearly have masses of room in this shelter and all the kit that you have there you could put over on that uh, in that far left hand corner you know you're always going to have you know stuff that you don't need to be using regularly so anything that you don't need to be using regularly boots or something like that could go over into that far left hand corner where it's just, you know, you can get get it when you need it. And other things that you need close to hand, you can just put down there in that space right next to you. And again, you know, if you had another person with you, then they could be sticking their boots over in that far corner over there. I still have an absolute ton of space in here. The shelter is, uh, you know, significantly bigger than the Cuban fiber trail star version. I think the other thing that I mention at, at some point or other is that you will notice that there is a lot more space to my left here and over there. And if you were a family of four and you had <laughs> and you had small children with you, then you could put your children on your far left and far right and use your little kiddies as draft excluders yeah, which is exactly what I'm demonstrating and talking about here put your little babies over on those far edges perfect draft excluders <laughs> oh god there's no hope is there like I said if you know any lip readers out there I'd love to know what I was saying. I can't even remember myself. This might be where I was talking about the babies, I think. That's where I'm pointing over there. <laughs> it's a shame. I, it's a shame the sound uh, didn't work. I'll try and keep keep a closer eye on it. I, I don't know what happened here. I'm even I'm even checking it by uh, tapping it um, occasionally now rather than just saying testing testing. Yeah, that's me laughing at my joke about putting a kid is at the edge. Of course, if you have got this far, please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit that notification button to all as of course usual. And make sure you come back for more. Drop a comment in the comment below and obviously if you have any questions or anything or you're struggling to pitch this or anything else or you want any uh you know questions answered or anything like that you know do get back to me again here you can see i'm showing you that the the edge over there 
is at least around about, I think I measured it, around about 60 to 65 centimeters off the ground under that D ring. One other thing that I will mention, which I, I'm sure I talk about when I was outside and I probably was when I was uh, needing to lip read, those um, mid hem tie out points, I did um, I did hear one, one uh, YouTube channel suggesting that you might want to cut those off. That would be a major, 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 major mistake and I would not ever contemplate cutting those mid hem line locks off. Oh, okay. I know the feeling. I'll have a yaw myself while I do the talking. Because basically, of course, if the wind changes direction and it starts to come in that door, which of course it did, check out my video last October in the Lake District, funnily enough, then of course you want to have the immediate ability not to have to change the entire shelter, but simply to move the door to one of those side um, lane locks. So don't cut those off. And then here, just very briefly, I'm demonstrating, oh, <laughs> attempting to demonstrate by the looks of it, you know that you have quite a lot of room in that bivy bag attached. Okay, so here we're doing a speed setup of the new Sil Nylon Trail Star. This one is, of course, slightly longer on the hem all the way around. It was very, very rocky here. It was really difficult to get these pegs in. You can see that it is very, very windy here. Oh, there's Lassie having a bit of a roll around. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Funny talk. So there, that's me pulling that front line really, really tight. So I'm not having to adjust the back line. And basically, you kind of like just go around. <laughs> Lassie. You kind of like go around doing bits here and there. Get a stone if necessary. And like I said, it was really, really rocky here. You basically could just kind of like just go around and tighten it up here, tighten it up there, loosen it here, loosen it there, you know, until you get it, you know, just perfect. <laughs> 